Hi, I'm Travis and you're watching Curious Tangents and 2020 has been eventful to say the least. 2020 has been the second hottest year on record trailed only by 2016 and there's been a record setting natural disasters, political corruption, and human rights violations. And that's not including the gigantic issue that we're all collectively dealing with. In fact, it's such a big issue that it sped up the news cycle to the point where I had to Google all of the record breaking events that have happened this year because, well, my mind only really thinks of one problem. So in order to put this misery into context, let's talk about some years that we can be grateful that we didn't also live through. What I really want to do here is figure out when was the worst year ever. In 1918, the war to end all wars came to an end. It wouldn't be until the 1930s that this war was known as the First World War, and it did not live up to its name. The war would include new technology like tanks, submarines, and fully automatic machine guns, the first war to have any of these. World War I, known as the First Modern War, would be the most deadly conflict in history to that point. On top of this, World War I also involved some 30 nations, making it not just a war of massive scale, but also a war of innovation, each side needing to get ahead of the other. The war would end up causing 7 to 8 million combat deaths, and the total death rate is widely disputed, but it's anywhere from 9 to 15 million. Following our plague of violence that was World War I, another plague would begin the Spanish flu, which, contrary to popular belief, was not from Spain. Spain would stay neutral during World War I and so was not under wartime censorship, unlike much of the world. Along with the fact that then leader of Spain, King Alfonso XIII, sometimes referred to as the African, for reasons I'll discuss in a different video, came down with the disease. If you look at this chart that I made, it shows the amount of deaths caused by World War I from 1914 to 1918 when it ended. And this chart shows the amount of deaths caused by Spanish flu from 1918 to 1920. Spanish flu would infect over one third of the population and kill 50 million, or 5% of the living people at that time. All the while, they had less technology and scientific knowledge than we do currently, meaning that solutions were far slower to come. Although catastrophic, this stretch of time was probably not the worst year ever. There were also the 1930s and 1940s, boasting some of the worst human rights violations the world has ever seen, proving the old Latin homage, homo homine lupus, or man is a wolf to man. There was also 1346, or the Black Plague, an event that killed one third of the European population and 25 million people worldwide. But everyone's gotten that history lesson over and over again. So instead, let's talk about 536. In 536, a mysterious fog would cover Eurasia for 18 months. Byzantine historian Procopius would write of the time that the sun gave forth light without brightness, like the moon for an entire year. Others would write that the sun shone itself only for four hours a day, and even then was still dark. The fruit did not ripen, and the wine tasted of sour grapes. These two were likely not exaggerating, as the average temperature of the globe dropped some 35 degrees. Fahrenheit, of course. If it were Celsius, we, we wouldn't be here. It would come to be known as the Ice Age of Late Antiquity, which is almost cute for some reason, despite the fact that it was one of the most devastating events to ever happen to mankind. But what actually happened? The culprit behind this seems to be a series of volcanic explosions. In China, it's said to have rained dust so heavily that you could scoop it up with your hands. No sun leads to no food, which leads to famine and overall weaker immune systems which is very unfortunate as the plague of Justinian would hit just five years later. Being that this was the 500s and modern science was not yet a thing, the plague would last a full 200 years. Some historians have come to the conclusion that this was the worst time to be alive. And I would disagree. In theory, of course. The Toba Catastrophe Theory. What you're looking at is Lake Toba in Indonesia, and today it looks fine. But about 74,000 years ago, it would have been erupting. 
Popa is a caldera, or the remnants caused by a volcano. In this case, it's a super volcano that nearly wiped humanity off the face of the planet. If you keep up with geography, you've probably heard about how strong the Yellowstone super volcano is. Thousands of times stronger than a regular volcano, and it would cause a catastrophe if it erupted today. The Toba supervolcano is thought to be 2.8 times stronger than Yellowstone. It's also thought that when it last erupted 74,000 years ago, it would have put humanity on the endangered species list. It's thought that during this time period, there were only 10 to 3,000 living human beings on the entire planet. It's estimated that the volcanic winter caused by Toba lasted up to 1,000 years. This would also go to help explain the human genetic bottleneck theory or the reason why we're all so closely related. We might seem incredibly diverse, but we're really not. In fact, there's more genetic diversity contained in the chimpanzees in Central Africa than there is in the entire human population. We would all be descended from those three to 10,000 living out their days in what would in many ways be a very lonely planet and thank you for watching. Hi, just a reminder, I have a Discord server, a Twitter, and an Instagram. Links to all three of those in the description and roll credits.